So we're going to talk about meningococcal disease and vaccine, mostly about vaccines. Uh, quickly going into meningococcal clinical syndromes. Quickly also about clinical management, which I won't spend too much time. Review of epidemiology, detailed uh, description of available vaccines, vaccine recommendation, and the status for Jordan. Uh, meningitis is responsible about 2% of childhood mortality and of course responsible for bacteremia also and sepsis. So it can go, Neisseria meningitis can go into different causes of, 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 of childhood uh, mortality uh, around the world. Uh, quickly, uh, microbiology speaking, this is a gram negative uh, diplococci that are usually intracellular. So if you have a gram stain telling you that you have intracellular gram negative diplococci inside the neutrophils, then most likely your differential diagnosis is Neisseria meningitis. And there are very few uh, gram negative diplococci that can cause infections. Yani, how do you swallow? Take a deep breath. Who knows what other microorganisms gram negative diplococci that can cause infections? Moraxilla, cataralis. What about Morganilla? Yeah? No? Wow. Well, it's a very virulent bacteria with, several, with uh, several significant serogroups. Uh, serogroup A is a leading uh, epidemic strain, mostly in Africa and China, and everybody knows about the meningitic belt of Africa. Uh, serogroup B is endemic in Europe and America. Uh, even though it's very difficult to develop uh, conjugate uh, B meningococcal vaccine, and uh, it's predominant in infants also, that's why sometimes we have vaccines for infants. Group C endemic in Europe and Americas with some outbreaks in school and communities. Y is increasing more in USA. And W135, we have heard about it from Hedge, for example. Uh, high mortality epidemics in meningitic belt and as in Hedge. And X is, is in Africa as an endemic uh, serogroup. It is estimated that 500,000 half million are suffering, suffering from invasive Neisseria meningitis each year. Out of these, 50,000 will die and 100,000 will develop complication. So it's a high, uh, high mortality rate and high uh, morbidity rate, which include neurodevelopment disorders like hearing loss, visual defects, seizures, and amputation of the affected limbs. Uh, risk groups can be divided into two groups, those who are uh, inherently immune compromised, especially with the complementary problem or asplenia or something around that disease, or because those who are in contact or in, with high exposure to Neisseria meningitis, like traveler, traveling to endemic areas, crowding like in Hajj and uh, military, uh, military places, student lodgings, uh, dormitories, uh, and also in patients, in, in, in healthcare workers working with Neisseria meningitis, and physicians. We are always high risk for everything, physicians and uh, pharmacists and those who are in contact with, patient, with patients. Uh, one of the difference in epidemiology and transmission between the three uh, famous encapsulated streptococcus pneumonia, uh, hemophilus influenza, uh, and uh, Neisseria meningitis, that septococcus pneumonia and hemophilus influenza develop a U-shape, which is in the beginning of the life and at the end of the life. Infants and very elderly, they have problems with it. While in Neisseria meningitis, there is another peak, which is around uh, college students' age. And that's what makes it a problem and makes it very highly contagious. The other problem that there's a lot of nasal carriage of Neisseria meningitis, that's why uh, chemoprophylaxis is indicated for all contacts with Neisseria meningitis case, while it is different in the streptococcus pneumonia and hemophilus influenza. Okay, so, so this is the peak, early life, late life, and around uh, college, college age, uh, 13 to 17 year of age. Always, always remember the meningitic belt here in Africa, okay? Uh, where uh, A is the most dominant strain causing uh, meningitis in Africa. And if you look at the, at the worldwide incidence 
of Neisseria meningitidis, you will see it much, 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 much higher in Africa, bare 100,000 population, and very low in Australia. So, so if you compare 0.07 bare 100,000, compared to 100 bare 100,000 in certain epidemics in Europe. So completely different story of incidence of meningitis between the developed countries and developing countries. Um, you can see this is uh, fulminant, uh, in uh, Neisseria meningitis infection. So if 100 patients develop general febrile disease because of Neisseria meningitis, 30% will end up having meningitis and 70% will end up having sepsis. Uh, you, we need to be very aggressive, very quick with antibiotics, fluids, and other medications. I'm not gonna go into this in this slide. This slide will go directly to uh, prophylaxis. Chemoprophylaxis for contacts, we can use different medications, including rifampicin, ceftriaxone, ciprofloxacin, and azithromycin. All these four medications are effective as chemoprophylaxis for contacts to Neisseria meningitis contact patients. Okay, switching gear to meningococcal vaccines. Meningococcal vaccines can be grouped into three main groups, either polysaccharide groups, conjugate groups, or other vaccines, other vaccines. Uh, in, in general, polysaccharide vaccines are made of the polysaccharide capsule of the Neisseria meningitis, whether it is A, C, W, or Y. However, we have been noticing, or the science is very clear about that, that the immunogenicity, the robust effect, and the length of a protection for polysaccharide vaccines are not optimal. You cannot use them before the age of two years. You have to repeat them every three to five years, and they do not get you robust immunity that will you cover, you will take it with time. So with the conjugate vaccines era for hemophilus, for meningococcal, for streptococcus pneumonia, what we do that the polysaccharide the, the polysaccharide capsule of the Neisseria meningitis is extracted and attached to something called the carrier. And the carrier is called the haptin. And the haptin is usually a protein. And this haptin or protein converts the, the, the type of immunity that being produced to a cell-mediated immunity with a memory cell that you will have more antibody production, more immunity produced, length, uh, length is, is, is much more uh, longer than that produced by, by polysaccharide capsule and more robust for, and can be very long uh, lasting immunity. And so this is a, tight, t t t and a very complex process, but you end up with a very, very excellent vaccine. That's the difference between polysaccharide and conjugate vaccine. And you, maybe some of you know also about hyporesponsiveness effect, that if you vaccinate first with polysaccharide capsule, then with conjugate vaccines, you might end up with less, with less immunity. We have three, uh, for example, the carriers. What carriers we are used? What happens we are used? Uh, for example, Minactra, which is one of the vaccines for one of the, of the companies, use the diphtheria toxins, toxoid. Uh, while Nyman Rex, which is another company, used tetanus toxoid, uh, while Minivio, Minivio, which is the third quadrivalent meningococcal conjugate vaccine, used something called CRM, which is a diphtheria toxin mutant uh, carrier protein. Okay, so what are the limitations, as we said, of polysaccharide vaccine, poor immunogenicity in infants and toddlers, short-lived, they lack immunological memory, like T-cell memory, with negligible impact in nasopharyngeal carriage, which is very important. Nasopharyngeal carriage, by example, you, uh, if you treat with ceftriaxone, you get rid of it in the patient, but it keeps in the, in the context. And it gives no herd immunity. Actually, polysaccharide vaccines doesn't, is not associated with good herd immunity. And I talked to you about hyperresponsiveness or hyperresponsiveness effect after related doses. Okay, so what, what do we know about polysaccharide quadrivalent vaccine? Polysaccharide, not 
may not conjugate vaccines. Uh, we have one for Sanofi, one I think for JS, J, GSK. They were produced in 1981, 1983. Of course, indications should be more than two years group because under the age of two years, they are not really effective. It is one dose and the groups that they have are A, C, W, and Y. Uh, we have bivalent and trivalent vaccines that are also available for polysaccharide vaccine. Uh, polysaccharide vaccines are usually used, well, they were used, used before conjugate meningococcal vaccine, but after production of conjugate pneumococcal vaccines, we can use them for allergic patients who are allergic, for example, for conjugate vaccines. Sometimes price issues can be a problem for certain countries of certain people. And of course, more than 50 years, because some other vaccines that are conjugate vaccines may are not, uh, uh, they are not in, you know, um, registered for more than 55 years age. And of course, you can combine them with the conjugate vaccine for certain high, high risk groups. Uh, uh, zero group B is another story. And uh, uh, there are no successful uh, trials to produce conjugate vaccines for zero group B. Uh, however, there are something called outer membrane uh, vaccines another technology they are using it similar to that of human papilloma virus vaccine just the same technology uh, we don't have this in jordan uh, there is uh, uh, there are different tramiba uh, uh, and big zero and other vaccines for zero group b now the 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 land is the the most important that we should know also today that the meningitic vaccine project that was uh, guided by who when uh, by the help of the money from uh, uh, Bill Gates uh, Foundation, uh, they have produced, Hiram Institute of India, they have produced something called Minafrica vaccine, which is meningococcal conjugate vaccine for strain A only because it is the most important strain causing, causing meningitis in Africa. And uh, the one dose for from one year to 29 years, and I think the, the, it costs uh, half a dollar or one dollar uh, for those people. So you don't hear much anymore about cases of, of meningitis in Africa because this vaccine really has done a lot in decreasing the meningitis case in the meningitic belt in Africa. Okay, so now there are monovalent conjugate vaccine C. Um, and you can see these names from different companies. They are given as young as two months and at least three doses. And these are actually, they did precede the quadrivalent meningococcal vaccine. And here you have different examples of those vaccines. So when we talk about quadrivalent conjugate meningococcal vaccines, uh, we talk about mainly three vaccines, Minactra, Minview, and Nymerix. And by the way, this is a, a very neutralized uh, lecture talking about all vaccines uh, together. Uh, so what are the difference? They are the same strains, the same strains. They differ in the carrier membrane, the carrier protein. So for Minactra, it is diphtheria toxoid. For Miniview, it is CRM. And for Nymenrex, it is TT. Uh, for all of them, they are all uh, approved for uh, nine months and above, nine months. So nine months to two years or two years and older, Minactra, Minivu, and Nymenrex are approved for those indications. While Nymenrex is not approved for the age of yeah, I mean, two months to, to, to nine months, uh, uh, they are approved for two months to nine months, sorry. They are abroad. The only one is Minactra that's not abroad for, for, uh, for two months to, to, nine, to nine months. Uh, all vaccines, uh, all vaccines, the other vaccines, Nymenrex uh, and Aminivu, they are approved as early as two months. And these are the doses. Of course, the doses, Taiwan meningococcal vaccine, they are confusing sometimes for people. So you need to always to go and read about them. So for, for Minactra, for example, uh, this is uh, if you give at the age of nine months and after that, according to approval, you give one dose and the second dose will be after three months at least. 
If you are giving after two years, you give one dose. You give one dose only. If you are using Miniview uh, as early as, as six weeks and two months, you give a zero at four months, six months, and 12, 12 months. So four doses. If you are giving Nymenrex, you give three doses in the first year. Uh, if you are giving these, medica these vaccines after six months, uh, then you give here two doses, the same, and here you give one dose and the second dose after three months. Here you give one dose at whatever time you start, the dose after two months, and one year or four months after that. So this is not something to memorize. This is something to know that the earlier the age you give the vaccine, the more, the more the doses, the more the doses you give. And if you give after two years, it's always uh, one dose here, one dose here, and one dose here. So, but, so maybe you can choose the two-year-olds and give, and give one dose if you want to memorize these things. Okay, so they are safe vaccines. They are quadrivalent. They are meningococcal. Uh, uh, just the same. In, in the states, in the states, the SEIB recommendation for regular, for regular uh, uh, people in, in the state, they are giving two two shots. One is at 11 year, and the other is at 16 year. This is just before you entering college, so at the high school and entering college. And if you did, if you miss that, the catch up vaccine is between 13 and 15 years or 16 and 18 years. If they miss the dose before 16 years, you just give one dose after 16 years of age. Okay. Uh, so these are the recommendations in, in general. Uh, now the question is, uh, where, where do we fit uh, meningococcal vaccines in Jordan? You know, meningococcal vaccines are not within the recommendation of the NITAG committee so far. However, and if we finish adding pneumococcal vaccine, hopefully Dr. Kamel in a few months, uh, then we have to decide on our, uh, uh, in our uh, calendar or our recommendation. Oh, I'm not saying we're going to use uh, or choose uh, meningococcal vaccine. I'm going to tell you what does WHO says. WHO says that countries with high uh, or intermediate endemic rates, high means more than 10 cases per 100,000 population, or endemic between 2 to 10 cases per 100,000 population, of invasive meningococcal vaccine disease, and countries with frequent epidemics, مثل السعودية مثلا يعني دول بصير عندها حج وتكرار uh, or some African country should introduce appropriate large scale meningococcal vaccination. The problem we don't know what endemic rate we have in Jordan. So I think the first step is just that we did with hepatitis, we did with rotavirus, that we should know what do we have in Jordan. And I think this is one of the studies that we should start uh, building for uh, Dr. Muni Rukto. And that, okay? Yeah. Uh, yes, so we should know what, where, where we are. In countries where the disease occurs less frequently, less than two, where 100,000 population meningococcal vaccination is recommended for defined risk groups. And the children have to risk groups, okay? So you can play with this, with this game, whatever you want. And young adults residing in close communities, like dormitories, or military camps. Of course, we are not talking about immune-compromised patients who should really receive, receive this vaccination. So I will leave it at here. We need to think of it scientifically.